shaded forms collage. How can you shade different forms and solids with different kinds of surfaces? Here is the worksheet you will print so you can shade your forms. You can access this worksheet in the Files tab in the Class Materials folder. Open and print this sheet to do your shading. Remember, shading is adding shadows. Shadows are created with light shining on an object. These red arrows show from which direction the light is shining. The shadow's edges are determined by the object that you are drawing. Something with sharp edges and flat surfaces, like a cube, will have dark or hard shadows at the edge. A round shape, like a sphere, would have a softer, more gradual shaded area to create the shadow. Notice the arrows pointing from which direction the light is shining and also notice the highlight. Here is a quick demonstration. Okay, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of how to shade this worksheet that you've printed. First, I want to tell you that we are going to be shading. We're going to shade and that means to add shadows. And one thing you must have uh, when you want to make shadows, or if you see shadows, you have to have light. So I've made this picture of a spotlight right here, and I'm gonna position mine over here on this side to remind me that this is where I want my light to shine from. Now, you might want your light to shine from this direction, and if you do, your dark shadows will be on the left side, and your highlights, and I should write that word down for you, the highlights, would be on the side that would get the exposure from the light. But I actually prefer mine over here, just out of habit. So first I'm going to uh, tell you that when you shade curved objects, it's going to be different than those with flat sides. So we have a circle, or excuse me, a sphere, which is the form of a circle. Here we have a cone, which would be the form for a triangle. Here's another form for a triangle, but I only want to talk about these two right here, and this cylinder. The reason I want to talk about these first is these will be shaded differently, and the shadow would be gradual. So if you look, let's start with the sphere. So the light is shining down, and I'm going to use my pencil, moving from side to side, the shadow. Do you see how I created a curve with my shadow? Now what you don't realize is by creating this curve, making my shading from side to side, what I'm doing is I'm creating the illusion that this is round like a ball. So now I'm going to make some darker shadows over here to the side. There you go. See that darker over here? So we've got our darkest shadows over here on the side way over here on the right side, and our medium shadow here, and now I'm going to make a very light shadow. There, done with that. You can see that this is the area that's receiving the highlights. That's an important thing to remember. Now if you go outside the lines, you can always go back with your eraser and clean it up. However, you really don't need to worry too much about it because you're going to cut all of these shapes out in just a few minutes when you're done shading. So I'm going to go over here and do the cone again next. And this is also a uh, curved shape form. So watch this. See how I made that kind of curve there? You can see that I've created a line here with the shadow. So next I'm going to make some darker shadows over here. Because the light is shining onto the cone from this direction. So there, my cone is pretty much finished. Now we're going to go down to do the cylinder. And the light is hitting 
the top of the cylinder. And so I'm not going to shade that at all. I'm only going to do my shadow on the right side here, and it's going to get gradually lighter as it goes on the left side because the light is shining down on the left side. So I'm going to do my shadow. Notice that I'm using my pencil and making these, these lines, the shading from left to right. That's important. If you start going up and down, you're not going to get the desired outcome. It's going to be much more effective, look better, however you want to describe it, by making the lines from side to side. So I've got my darkest shadow over here on the right side where hardly any light is hitting the cylinder. I've got a medium shadow here and maybe I'll make a light shadow right here so it's kind of blended. So I basically have a light, medium, and dark shadow. So I've done my three sh uh, shapes or forms that have uh, curves, and now I'm going to uh, talk about these four. So I'll go ahead and start with the cube first. Now I'll start with the with the shape here, and the full light is hitting this side, so it's going to be very light. So really, you're only going to be shading this side. This is where the shadow is, right here. This is the back side of that shape. Keep calling it a shape, we need to remember that shapes are two-dimensional, Forms are three-dimensional. These are forms. And they're very geometric as well. All right, now I did make that one kind of dark, so I think I will shade this in just the lightest amount. Just very, very light. There you go. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to, if I had the number of the shadows on this form, I would say I would go one, two, three in darkness. So this would be the lightest shadow. This one is getting hit with the light, but not as much as the top, so this would have a medium. Actually, I should be going in this direction. There's the medium shadow. You can see that there's a difference between the medium shadow and the light shadow. And last, I'll make the darkest shadow. I'm pressing down a little harder with my pencil. There you go. I would, now I'm going to look at this one here, which is exactly the same as the cube, it's just taller. We've got our full light here, which would get the lightest shadow, the medium shadow here. Notice I'm going up and down this time, breaking my own rules, and my darkest shadow over here. So really, it's just like the cube. I have three different values of gray that I'm coloring in with my pencil. Three different values, all going from light to dark. And simply, I'm achieving this with the pencil and just pressing down harder to get that darker value. And last, I'll do this shape here. We've got our full light going right here, so maybe I'll use just the lightest shadow. And then our secondary shadow right here. So now that you are, you have sh I've shaded my, all my forms, I am ready to cut them out and go to the next part. Once you are finished shading, you will cut your shaded forms out carefully and set them aside. Next, you will get a white sheet of paper about the size of computer paper. You will turn it horizontally and then draw a very light horizontal pencil line about two-thirds of the way down. The bottom space will be the table surface where we will glue the shapes in the foreground later. Now use any colored marker and begin drawing a line design in the section above the line that makes the table surface. If you don't have markers, use anything that you have at home, like crayons or colored pencils. When you're finished decorating the background, glue the previously cut shaded forms by arranging them in a manner consistent with the light source and taking care of the positions of the forms on the foreground surface. 
once your forms are arranged and glued down, you may go back and add cast shadows on the tabletop. Here are shaded form collages by students just like you. Your turn. Get started. The end.